So hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk today. Uh, I can repeat again. My name is Nong Atrit. Actually, my full name is Nong Nut Atrit, but just call me Nong. It is shorter. So uh, in my right, I just moved to Utrecht University last week, and I'm really looking forward to working with you all. So in this lecture today, uh, I will give an overview of uh, my past research uh, related to the modeling of complex energy materials with machine learning. So use um, a machine learning framework, a domestic energy network in it uh, that we develop and apply to the complex uh, energy materials and we share uh, with the uh, uh, scientific uh, communities like uh, open source is uh, free, uh, freely available for everyone. Uh, many material properties such as uh, stability, structures, or reactivity depend on, uh, for example, electronic uh, structures and also atomic scales, right? Density functional theories or DFT is based on uh, first principles and give good predictions for small structure model, which should uh, contain a few hundred of atoms. But for properties of larger or nano structures, for example, in molecular dynamic simulations or MD here. So DFT computational is too demanding. So we develop uh, efficient and accurate machine learning model for such applications. And for larger uh, simulation or larger scale, we apply lattice models used in finite temperatures Monte Carlo simulations. So in this talk, uh, I will focus on the intermediate scales and machine learning potentials. Um, as you know that uh, many energy conversion processes are based on reactions at interface that can be very complex and also very challenging for simulations. Here, um, the cartoon that I draw here show uh, electrocatalytic CO2 reductions. So to model such a complex process, we have to uh, find models that can describe complicated phases such as uh, liquid solids and interfaces. Um, it is difficult with uh, DFT because uh, the requirement of length very large and also long term scale of the simulations. So over the past year, we have been therefore developing an out, uh, alternative approach by combining the accurate DFT and machine learning model for complex energy materials. So before I go too uh, deep, so I got an email to confirm that I should also tell a little bit about the principle, I mean like uh, the basic principles. So what is machine learning? Machine learning has become part of our everyday life. For example, machine learning can predict traffic and find the fastest route to come to Utrecht University from Amsterdam by car, for example. Or machine learning uh, recommender system can suggest you some uh, movies based on what you already watched before. Fingerprints and faces recognition to log in the personal computer or phone is also based on machine learning. And how uh, machine learning can be used in or uh, can use for material science. So we can use machine learning model for data analysis and automate model uh, building. We can use machine learning to learn from data, identify patterns and make decisions with minimal human work. The data can be, for example, from experimental measurements or from computational modeling, right? Um, this diagram show the three most common applications uh, applications for machine learning for materials modeling. So this uh, uh, a, this is a quantum mechanic database of first principle or DFT. Um, this contain, for example, atomic structures and properties. The properties, for example, formation energies, elastic moduli, band gap, or spectroscopies, for example. And then uh, for um, one type of machine learning model that can describe, for example, accurate potential energy surface that then can be used in assembling Monte Carlo simulation or MD or molecular dynamic simulations. And another type, if we have a database of uh, atomic structures, we can use a machine learning model to predict uh, material properties. Or if we have material properties, this is quite hard. This is called inverse design approach. And then we can draw or can uh, predict atomic structures, right? This is the most common, uh, but then some basic. For example, the regressions or machine learning regressions. We also start, for example, with the feature level or, or XY data points. But here we want to fit a continuous functions to the data points that I show here as a blue uh, clause here. So we want to uh, uh, determine the function that relates X to Y. 
So you are probably familiar with the linear regressions, for example, or this means like a line fitting, right? So mathematically regressions can be expressed as these equations like I show here. Um, so why is it depend, uh, dependence variable? And regression models, this function, and also independent variable. And then model parameters. Also very important, the additional term, this is the residuals errors that you can see here. So um, machine learning provides models and way to de uh, determine the model parameters by training, like I show it here. So um, artificial networks are inspired by biological neural networks in our brain. So each neuron is a nonlinear signal processor. So neuron take signals as input and then find output when the signal large or strength is high enough. So this means neurons apply a nonlinear activation functions to uh, uh, input signal and then produce output. So artificial neurons do the same, right? So, but the main difference is, is the activation functions of artificial neurons is continuous. So uh, um, for example, the popular choice, are, for example, the hyperbolic tangent or other uh, sigmoid, I mean like the sigmoid shape functions or Gaussians. So recently, uh, Relu also has become popular, which is basically a line that changes the slope. So artificial uh, neurons are then connected in network. For example, uh, uh, you can see like uh, in this graph or the equation here. Um, so uh, the input feature that you have it here can be, for example, the atomic structures. And then the hidden layers can be uh, 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 like a mathematics without uh, any physics and then also apply similar to the slide that I showed before. And with these neurons and then with this uh, just response, and then we can predict, uh, for example, like the energies or cohesive energies. This is the neural networks or uh, machine learning model can try to find the relationship between its structures and the energies. Um, this is how uh, uh, many uh, uh, groups that have been working or using the activation function. There are so many different types of uh, functions that you can really select it depending on your applications and also your function that you are uh, interested in. Um, this is very simple uh, that I show just try to fit the, uh, for example, the parabola. So the X this is just the number and is the Y this is the parabola shape. And if we convert the training example here, like the reg uh, regressions of a parabola, this is a uh, simple the input layer, and this is the hidden layer and output layer. In this equation, we apply a hyperbolic tangent, but only uh, for the two nodes that we have it here. Uh, the blue one, this is response to this uh, energies, and also the green, and then this by uh, sum up that we can see. And now looking at our uh, example of the training, if you can see here, follow, um, the curve, this is a, a hyperbolic tangent on the blue and also the green. When we combine with these two and then we sum up with the bias number, this is uh, with the that, that, that blue to let the constants and then it's chipped to the right curve of the parabola as a rate as the output at uh, you can see it here. So this is just very simple, but in realistics, in materials, we have a uh, very complicated, for example, the database that we have is really there are so many different uh, atoms and many uh, different type of uh, structure like molecules and surfaces. So we use the same idea that we have uh, the quantum database and then use a uh, machine learning model to interpolate and also construct efficient and also uh, accurate machine learning potentials and then use in applications, for example, for the larger range and time scale in MD and MC simulation. So the method that we use, we use new network because it can really represent the uh, database very accurately and also can handle really very large uh, data points, like a million of data points. So now um, how uh, machine learning can use it for excellent atomistic modeling. Um, let me uh, uh, briefly show the history of uh, artificial neural potentials uh, before we really to see what um, I have been developed and also uh, contributes to the communities. So actually, 
The idea to use artificial neural network to represent potential energy surface is not new, right? As you can see here, in 1995, uh, lead by Blank and also Dorant published it in JCP already that they show first potential energy surface to represent, for example, a uh, complicated like a CO molecules on the nickel 111 surface. And then 2004, uh, led by Lawrence and Machet Schepler, they also show symmetry adapted coordinates for a neural network potential for complicated hydrogen molecules, potassium and palladium 100 surface. And then uh, for the first time that uh, uh, my PhD advisor, Professor Baylor, and also Polinello. So they uh, really show for the first time that high dimensional neural network potentials that can use for any type of uh, number of atoms. But what they demonstrate this is what only for single chemical species, many different phases of silicon. And then when they joined the Baylor group uh, in Bochum, so we uh, developed together with uh, uh, Professor Baylor. So we extended to multi-component system by including electrostatics interactions, and we demonstrate the, our method with the zinc oxide. And then 2017, so they also uh, developed and extended the method and can really use this for realistic model for uh, and have the database for like a 5 million data points and make it very general organic molecules, for example, can apply for hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. So this is just to show how a good progress of uh, the applications. As you can see that uh, I just picked it only since 2011, you can see that number of publication really growing uh, even until uh, today, as you can see here. But you can see that, but still um, it's not yet uh, general and not many, many people uh, have been using it. So still uh, further development needed. <clears throat> Um, if you are interested in here are some of the papers that you can take a look and also can, uh, uh, as uh, Ingma said that I'm also here, if you have any questions on those uh, papers, I'm happy to discuss. Um, um, this is an uh, example now looking at the realistics of materials or molecules. This is an example of neural network training. So we can train uh, a neural potential on reference data from DFT, for example, here in the black diamond shapes and neural network as a red curve here. And in the same time, you can also, this is a molecule or is isolated cluster. At the same time, we can also uh, use or construct neural potentials for solids or crystal structures. In this case, we develop one uh, neural potentials to describe uh, copper gold alloys, for example, uh, in this case. As you can see here, um, we uh, have uh, a few iterations of optimization of neural potentials. We see that uh, our neural potential can train or interpret the DFT data very accurately, like you can see here. And uh, this is just the diagram to show that how to construct uh, new network potentials or machine learning potentials uh, in practice. So as I already mentioned earlier, so we have a uh, uh, first reference data, for example, from DFT, and then the initial data then can use to fit an initial N and potential. And potential and then can use it, for example, uh, to validate because of to get many different uh, models is also not that easy. We have to select the models and then we have to uh, find ways to, to train and then also make model validations. If the model validation is not good yet, we have to find again to select different models and then train again and then uh, test. If the model validation is already uh, excellent and good agreement with the reference data, and then we make it independent with independent test sets. If this is really uh, uh, can be used or not. If this is not good yet, we have to again back to the loop by apply different methods. So in the communities we call active learning. But if our neural potentials or our machine learning models already good, then we can use it in the real applications that we can use it for complicated uh, um, complex systems. If you are interested in, we also have a code available together with the tutorials that everybody can access it easily here. Uh, you can follow this link. And now uh, let me uh, show one concrete example. So the usual approach is to construct neural potentials by iterative refinements of the reference data sets. So in this machine learning literature, I mean people call active learning, like I just uh, already mentioned before. 
So we start with an initial DFT data set and then train a preliminary neural potentials and then use it in, for example, in MD simulations. And then we select structures along the MD trajectories and recompute it with DFT to check the accuracies if there are already agreements or close to the reference data already or not. But if neural potential or neural network predicts not very good, so we can reiterate, for example, by including in the training set again. But if it is not uh, 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 very different, we have to set the criteria how uh, large of the errors, for example, root mean square error. If it is already good, and we can then use in our applications. So usually um, the data set is just, uh, should be very diverse. This means uh, if the data that was enough, the accuracy of neural potentials will also improve, but the data set will also will grow and also uh, in number of data points also will be increasing. So um, as I already mentioned before that we also developed the tools and we also share in, in with the public. This is uh, our uh, the atomic energy network uh, software package. This is the first uh, publicly available to implemented machine learning potential map dots. So if you are interested in this is the website, we also have the GitHub. Right now we implemented uh, our code that can be used it with many different MC and MD, MD codes, for example, uh, ASE, LAM and Tinker, also the L poly and also genetic algorithms here. So we first have uh, the database that we can uh, convert your atomic structure or the database to the format in our code that we can use it to train. For example, the data that you have, you can have like atomic coordinations, uh, energies or forces or the charges or any other type of uh, the input that you would like to train. And then we also have uh, the training uh, algorithms that you can also select. But once you have uh, uh, many different models from your machine learning, and then you can use it, for example, directly to like predict uh, and compare with your reference. Or you can use it with a uh, library that you can link with the MD or MC code for your own applications. Just to show you uh, one example that we have implemented uh, in it with the MD code, this is LAMPS. I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, software package here. So this is called um, like a we test, um, like a, a uh, the benchmark. So the x axis this is the number of cords, and this is the efficiency of the our polarizations. So this is um, we have we use uh, this is for single CPU. Uh, we have it as a 100 uh, percent of the efficiencies. If we uh, increasing number of core, so we also only just reduce a number of uh, efficiencies only by 20 percent. So around 80 uh, percent is also very good. But you can see the number of uh, the test or the benchmark. We have like a million of atoms. So this means uh, for one simulations, we use around 50 seconds for one million atoms on 96 core. And this means one day we can really run like uh, 46 uh, thousands of MD steps or 46 picosecond. If we use the time step like one femtosecond per step, but if solids uh, or the crystal structures, we can use larger steps. And, but in realistic, we don't do simulation very uh, um, too many atoms, right? Sometimes maybe 100k atoms is can already capture the interface structure, for example. So if we use uh, the uh, atomic structure around 100k atoms on our of 96 core, so we, one day we can already run simulation like around 500 picosecond. It's also depending on your computer. So this is just to show the performance of our uh, 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 software package. So now let's look at a few research uh, examples that I prepare. So we apply our uh, machine learning potentials or neural potentials to uh, uh, address or to um, answer different research questions in energy conversion and storage. So in catalysis, we investigated, for example, metal support interactions, solvent effects, and also active size in oxide. But today, uh, I only will show uh, uh, one example of metal support interactions and also one example of solvent effect on synthesis. But um, from the uh, catalytic example, we also have 
Uh, actually, in the past few years, we also uh, address, I mean, apply our methods to address modeling of complex battery materials, which is a similar modeling, uh, very complicated, similar to catalysis. So especially the reactions at interface. So today I only will discuss the um, silicon anode, which is a more of a structure. Mm, let's look at uh, the first example. So back in the Baylor group in Bochum, Germany, so we investigated the copper single oxide catalyst for methanol synthesis. So the systems uh, exhibit strong metal support interactions and our experimental collaborators were looking for an explanation of their observations, right? Um, so as I already mentioned that uh, metal oxide interfaces are also important to batteries. So zinc oxide supported copper is the catalyst for methanol synthesis. And it is known that uh, copper interacts uh, strongly with the zinc oxide support. So we use our neural potentials with uh, MD simulation here. Uh, this is the information of the data that we use to train. And also this is the uh, predictions of the root mean square error that we have, which is a uh, kind of very good uh, agreement with the reference uh, method that we use. But the model that we have uh, here, this is around 8,000 atoms, as you can see here. So, uh, but the MD simulation that we use is, is quite high temperature so that we can see the atom really uh, 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 move in the short simulation time. But what uh, I would like to, uh, uh, to, to, to to uh, uh, speak is that our simulation that uh, how to explain that it is uh, without uh, machine learning potential or machine learning model to have, we cannot do such a simulation with a, a, such a DFT. And our simulation show the structure similar to the observations by STM images from our collaborators. And another example uh, that we apply our machine learning model to address um, for example, to understand nano alloys, uh, that the nano structure for catalysts. So the synthesis conditions are also important, right, for the properties of catalyst materials. So we look at uh, interesting cases related to a couple of gold uh, nano alloys, which it, uh, they are efficient and stable catalysts for oxygen reduction reactions and CO2 uh, reductions. So copper is a good catalyst, but is oxidized too fast in solutions. So the particle size uh, of the catalyst that uh, develop or uh, show here by uh, Yang Shaohan group is just around five to 10 nanometer cluster size in solutions. And as a computational material scientist, how can we identify the important compositions and the structures? So with neural potentials, we can investigate such a nanoparticles. So um, we first look at the nanoparticles in vacuum here, and we use, for example, um, neural network potentials together with uh, Monte Carlo simulations to investigate the atomic ordering of uh, copper gold atoms. Um, so this is how our Monte Carlo uh, annealing simulations, as you can see here, that the, the gold and copper atoms rearranged in cautious orderings in small nato nanoparticles up to a full uh, uh, nanometer cluster size, which is around 1,000 of atoms. So in vacuums, you can see that uh, uh, gold like to stay on the surface. But let me uh, briefly discuss about the CPU time. This is uh, 147 atoms. So with the FT calculations, we need around 300, sorry, three uh, hours with the 16 cores, but we have uh, accurate neural potentials to predict uh, uh, atomic energies, which take around one, just one second. And for the three or four thousands of atoms here, that uh, for these nanoparticles, for the FT, it will be very difficult. And for uh, neural potential, we use it around one minute per uh, one, core on my laptop that I can use it. Not only this, um, for the next uh, uh, investigations, our Monte Carlo simulation also uh, uh, looking at the more complicated by including also uh, water or the solvations. So we found that in uh, this model uh, in water, so a mix of copper and gold is presented at the surface. 
This is also true for nanoparticles and also for the extended uh, surfaces here uh, in the middle or below of thicker here um, in these figures. So the synthesis conditions are also important also for the battery materials. And as you can see here that uh, with our um, machine learning model and machine learning potentials, we can really uh, use it to address the complex uh, system like this. Um, now, I would like to show uh, one example also uh, for complex uh, battery materials. But before um, I go to my own work, I would like to give a, a brief introduction why uh, uh, simulation of batteries is complex. As uh, many of you know that batteries are complex and also very uh, challenging for simulations, right? Many aspects of a battery are too complicated and we cannot use just a, a DFT to understand the properties. For example, consider these two examples. On the left, uh, you can see a beautiful uh, uh, STM in figures by Dr. Dutney and uh, Dr. Meng's uh, groups with the interface of the solid state batteries. So this is a lithium cobalt oxide and also the, uh, the electrolyzed lipon. And, and you can see here, this is a anode, this is a copper silicon, right? And on the right hand side, this is a cryo TM images for a silicon anode from a recent work by uh, Dr. Uh, McIntyre and Dr. Uh, Equis from Stanford. So both systems show Lily nano structure features and solid solid interface and also amorphous phases here. So um, these structures and phases are important for the properties of the batteries, but modeling for such a complex system, so with the FT we cannot. I mean, from the previous slides, uh, we show that the modeling of batteries is complicated. So our goal is that, uh, so we start from, for example, um, usually we have uh, atomic scales that we can use with DFT, and then we will use machine learning to uh, scale up and try to use uh, the relations between the accurate DFT uh, method and machine learning that we can also use it to predict the properties at the very accurate at the interface or larger scale. So this is also uh, like the previous uh, slide that I show also for complex uh, catalysts. And this is one example of the uh, silicon anode that I uh, would like to show as example of today's lecture. Um, in general, the silicon anodes is a very challenging system to model because of amorphous lithium silicon alloy phases. So we train uh, a machine learning potentials or neural potentials to reproduce all of the silicon, uh, uh, lithium silicon uh, ground states phases here, like you can see in the phase diagram. So many different compositions in the black uh, <clears throat> circle here, this is the crystal structures. But in realistic, during the battery cycling, it also show many different uh, amorphous structures, which is the uh, higher energies. The X axis, this is the number of lit uh, lithium atoms in uh, uh, the end node structures. And the Y axis, this is the formation energies, right? And in the same time, uh, by the way, uh, my neural predictions, this is as accurate as DFT. In the slides only show uh, DFT results. And also uh, our neural potentials, can also predict the voltage profile that uh, calculated, or sorry, uh, that uh, measure from experimental measurements, like in this uh, blue curve here. Um, let's look at uh, how accurate of our neural potentials. This slide show um, the validations of our neural potentials with the NEB, uh, uh, calc I mean NEB calculations or NEB images here, like we have, and this is the energies. You can see that in one neural potentials, we can predict different different compositions of the lithium in the structures. For this, uh, for example, the uh, DFT uh, circles and also neural uh, solid light that we have it here. You can see that it's really in good agreement. But note that the structure this is not included in the training set. And then um, another test that to show that neural potential can also use it in the simulations, long simulation, like a two nanoseconds. So you can see that many different compositions and from the initials until final of the simulations is also show that uh, the DFT and neural predict 
I mean, uh, to show in very good agreement. So this means our potential is, is uh, good to use in our applications. And then we use uh, our new potentials to uh, do simulations of uh, the whole uh, silicon uh, anode that we have it here. As a different um, lithium uh, composition, we can also see that show different uh, st atomic structures like you can see here. We also use our new potential to run MD simulations with different compositions and also different uh, temperatures so that we can predict or, or estimate the diffusion coefficients or the transport uh, properties um, in different uh, uh, compositions. So then we use Alinear Plus to estimate the diffusion coefficient at room temperatures. Um, you can see here that in different compositions, the silicons uh, uh, in blue here show the structures, I mean the ordering in the structures uh, differently. In this composition, lithium 3.50, the atomic uh, of the silicon, it looks like isolate. But when the lithium 2.25 here, it looks like a, have a, like a bonded or chain of the silicon. And lithium 100 and silicon 100 show the silicon network in the structures and also show the um, different uh, properties of the, I mean, like a diffusion coefficient of the compositions. So our uh, results that is summarized here in this table. So we perform like a long five nanoseconds in an MD simulations with different uh, lithium content in the structures. So we found that um, at the compositions at the 1.0 uh, and 2.250, the lithium uh, transport show the best uh, diffusities. And this is how uh, we can identify in our uh, model. And not only our neural potential predictions of the diffusities, we also compare our uh, predictions with the experimental measurements. So you can see that our predictions is also uh, in good agreement with experimental measurements. But then now let's go back again to looking at the composition that we have here, the lithium 1.0 and also 2.25. You can see that the structure uh, of the silicon is formed like a cluster in the structure that we uh, have it here. So with this knowledge, we can also see that during uh, battery cycling, how can we uh, identify or have, how can we control the, the number or the uh, concentrations in the structure, right? That we can uh, get best performance of the lithium in the structures. So this is show uh, just uh, two example of the my machine learning uh, potential work. Actually, we also have uh, many more materials that's based on uh, my own work, but actually also many more that we also looking at uh, the, the, the cathodes, uh, disorder materials for the lithium cathodes uh, materials, and also looking at the lipons uh, amorphous uh, solid electrolytes, and also looking at the defect structure of large uh, uh, simulation for the copper uh, surfaces. And not only this, uh, using our ANET code, we also support many different uh, uh, user and mm, scientists also really can get really very nice results for their uh, own work. But I'm sorry that I could not list all of the work that use ANET in this slides, but just to uh, show example how our uh, 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 ANET can support also uh, scientists in the communities. Um, so this is just a uh, uh, briefly talk about my machine learning potential work that can be used to understand and to uh, simulate it, very complex energy materials. But I also prepare another type of machine learning uh, that for catalyst discovery. So I guess that I have uh, also some time because this is now only uh, half past four. Um, I think that my second part of my talk, I will show slightly different uh, from the previous uh, 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 machine learning that we can use. So this is um, the second part of my talk that I would like to really discuss the research related to machine learning for catalyst discovery. So before that, I would like to thank for pioneer of this topic. So many simple uh, basics, how to say the physics base and also intuition base, descriptors of catalyst, catalytic performance already known. So nowadays we hope that uh, machine learning can also help 
to identify more complex descriptors to access the, for example, uh, uh, many different type of uh, descriptor that can also accelerate the catalytic discoveries. For example, we have uh, already before that uh, from Professor Yanuskov that also identified by volcano plot and also looking at like a D band center. And now they actually there are so many features that can also be a good descriptors, right? For example, structure, chemical species that how can machine learning can uh, use it to learn descriptor and help to uh, uh, identify the best uh, catalysts. So this is one example that we are using. So this project we demonstrated how a combinations of machine learning and large uh, uh, first, principle, first principle or DFT calculations can be used to extract knowledge from a small set of experimental data. So we predict catalyst uh, uh, activities and selectivities for ethanol reforming. The motivations of this work is that uh, carbon neutral ethanol economy, right? Like uh, uh, I think most of people here already know that uh, uh, bioethanol reforming is at, uh, attractive for hydrogen productions. And uh, but however, there are side reactions make ethanol reformings like uh, inefficient. For example, unfortunately, ethanol reformings compete with other reactions over platinum catalysts, for example. So ethanol can also undergo uh, the carbonulation in reactions or total uh, decompositions, like you can see in the red reaction that I draw it here. So these reactions are really undecided, and since they result, I mean, they result in loss some of the hydrogens of catalysts, like you can see here. So can we or uh, uh, can better ethanol reforming catalysts? Um, maybe it is better to to find maybe. If we can find uh, a, a way and then and, and to really get the best uh, uh, reforming that is better to avoid uh, this two, for example, the red uh, reaction that I draw it here. So uh, in 2006 and 2008, Ding um, Wangshan group uh, now is in Colombia, but before it was in the Delaware. So um, they demonstrated how <clears throat> the platinum based monolayer by metallic catalysts are promising for ethanol reforming. So they investigated two types of, uh, uh, for example, two types of uh, materials. The first, this is the, the uh, purple, this is a tungsten metals, and the gray, this is a platinum uh, or 111 surface. And also another model is the one monolayer of platinum, and the second uh, layer is this different type of tension metals, and also platinum 111 surface. So uh, the report is by uh, uh, these two papers that they use, for example, titanium, iron, and nickel as the tension metals. So in this case, uh, we have the question like, uh, are there other tension metals uh, better than uh, those kind of materials? as a, a test case or example case, right? So we see that in principle, we could calculate the reaction profiles for many different catalysts with DFT. But uh, for selectivity uh, predictions, we need to know the rate uh, determining steps. So this means we need uh, activation energies for all possible, for example, like a CC bond breaking, like a, a RCO uh, bond breaking, for example, here. So in this uh, slide, I will show only some uh, partial reaction network. So CC, uh, this is in blue uh, bond breaking and CO bond breaking is in orange. But actually for ethanol decomposition, this is really a large number of possible reactions. Here you can see only just some or just partial reaction network, like you can see here. So it would be very time consuming to calculate the activation energies for all reaction step for many different catalysts. For example, if we use uh, NEB calculations. So we are thinking that maybe we can uh, use machine learning to help to find the best uh, reactions here. So I just named those reactions here now by label at uh, uh, 1 to 14 reactions here. In blue, this is CC bond breakings, and in orange, this is CO bond breakings just to let you know. So we were wondering if it would be possible to fit a machine learning model uh, directly to experimental activities and selectivity data. Could we predict the performance of the new catalyst? But actually the challenge is that the experimental data 
is extremely small. So actually machine learning models or machine learning for catalysis are actually often used uh, in my simulation, right? Like thousand, thousand of data points from the FT calculations. But um, the data set by uh, the Chen group that I showed before, they have only experimental measurements, only seven data points, and would be also be very time consuming if I have to uh, ask them to do all of the experiment again, just to fit and to make my uh, uh, machine learning. So we decided to uh, make, for example, the tools that I just proposed, and we proposed to have a two-step approach. So first, a complex nonlinear machine learning model. For example, we use um, Gaussian pro progress regressions or random forest regressions that we use it to speed up the predictions of activation energies and transient state energies with uh, DFT calculations that we use it uh, or calculate uh, NEB calculations. And then we use the first model, nonlinear, by having the feature or the descriptor that you can see in the list here. And then the second model, we use just simple linear models to construct uh, and to predict the reforming activities and selectivities which it have very small number of experimental measurements, only seven data points. So we expect that the activity, I mean the activity and selectivities from simple functions uh, from the experiment should be simple. That's why we decided to use linear uh, models. Um, this is what our model, and just to show you a uh, uh, brief, uh, just show the results. Actually, uh, in how to explain that, uh, as you know, that for most computational catalysis work, the activation energy are usually not really calculated, but just estimates. For example, from the initial uh, or two products that we have the, the energy differences, that they also can use it for the called activation energies, and then they estimate the activation energy here. Like this is uh, the reaction energies, delta E, and also activation energy here. But this is just, they use the method. This is called bond straight E1, uh, uh, Polanyi, or BEP here, principle. This is already good to use to estimate. So just to uh, make it a different color, this is mean different uh, materials and also a different uh, um, mo uh, model that I showed you before. But um, this is the, the leave one out plot variation score that we use it for just these simple models. It is around uh, 0 0.45 EV from the predictions from the reference data and from the predictions by using this method. If you are interested in the method, I can also explain in detail. Uh, maybe this is just to give you an overview how use, we use it to predict. But then we include now the nonlinear models uh, in the predictions, and we have this as a feature in our um, uh, input. This is a, we have reaction energies, electronegativities, uh, uh, the nearest uh, neighbor distance, and also absorption energies. You can see that the cross validations validation that we have is here improving by uh, 30 percent of the error from the method that we use is for the BEP methods, like you can see here. So the predictions also are getting better when we use the combination of the nonlinear. Uh, models from our machine learning, like I just explained before. And now the second model. So before I use uh, our linear or nonlinear model for the second one, so I would like to draw some kind of like a definitions of the reforming activity and selectivities. So we know that uh, with the FT absorption energies and machine learning tangent state energies, we have now the complete reaction profiles. And we expect that the reforming activity and selectivity are simple functions from the reaction part that uh, I already showed before, right? So we define the activity and selectivity based on the three competing reactions that I already showed earlier. So the total activity is then the sum of the activities of the three uh, reactions that I already showed, at least in the early introductions. So the reforming activities is the contributions of the reforming reactions, and the reforming selectivity is given by the ratio here. So the capital A, this is the total activities. So the reforming activity is a small A, and the reforming of selectivities, this is the ratio. So now this is the definition, and now 
how instead of analyzing all prediction reaction profiles manually, so we fitted a linear regression models of the activities to the 14 reaction energies or the 14 tungsten state energies that I already showed before. So we are using now regularized linear regressions or lasso models to uh, determine the, the most important reaction states. So this is the feature that I already have before from the DFT and also machine learning model that I predict before. And now from our lasso model, so we selected the most important reactions and we found that the most important the reaction that we found is depending on these two reactions, the reaction one and the reaction two. And the parameters from the activity model that we have is here, depending on this uh, tangent state calculation of the reaction one and the tangent reaction, tangent state reaction of reaction two, and also the reaction energies of uh, reaction two that I draw before the 14 uh, reaction that I just label, and plus the constant here, 0 0.1. As you can see, and this is the machine learning model to predict activity models. And now the selectivities. So now the selectivity. So we must uh, uh, lie the selectivity in percentage can be between zero to one or zero to one hundred percent. Now we fit the locket of experimental selectivity S, as you can see here in this uh, equations. But in this case, we uh, have to vary uh, parameters, but we found that the beta that rescaling is at 10. Um, now, using our lasso model or linear, we found that our selectivity model depending on these five parameters. So this one is based on the reaction tension states of reaction one and uh, energy, I mean, the reaction energies of uh, the equation, I mean, the reaction one, and also uh, tangent state of uh, reaction three, and also the reaction energy of reaction four, like I also uh, show before. And so this means our model uh, predicts the reforming selectivity depending on these three reaction parts. Now let's see if our model is really predict uh, accurately we uh, uh, found that we have to do validations. So the activities and selectivity model represented their experimental reference data very well, as you can see. So the plots, so these two plots show uh, the first one, the activities. This is the experimental reforming activities from the seven data points that I already showed before. And this is our uh, predictions uh, of the reforming activities. And on the right, this is also uh, collected from reforming uh, selectivities from experimental measurements, and this is our predictions. So the 45 degree of the line here show that most of the data parts that we have is here very accurate predictions. Wow, it's just really uh, as that accurate. So we also make a different type of uh, uncertainty uh, 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 quantifications test, but we only looking at only the selectivities. So we decided to have a different models. So we know that uh, our selectivities is depending on five parameters and we only have the experimental data, only seven data points. So we decided to construct uh, a second independent selectivity model to make sure or to confirm our uh, predictions. So as you can see here now, we have two models, the linear in the blue uh, triangle shape and uh, logistics here in the circle. So this is all the data points that we have, actually many more, but I selected that um, what is important here. So we see now the two models. No, uh, I, I would briefly like to interrupt you that um, it's 10 to five. So um, in view of time, I think you should uh, uh, spend a few more minutes and then wrap up. Yeah, I'm almost done here. Just Perfect. want to show that uh, this model that we in, in introduced for the test, independence, we found that uh, two uh, uh, sets to system here is not very good in agreement. But I would like to mention is that because this is the best known that we have from the experimental measurement already, but uh, what we have the new predictions that actually the model from cobalt, platinum, platinum could be good or manganese, platinum, platinum, sorry, uh, yeah, pla 
yeah, could be good, but we don't have uh, in the uh, experimental measurement that because of our computation and did not also including the stabilities uh, in the model. So maybe we could also go back and ask the experimental uh, 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 work to confirm that if this uh, model that we predict they are good should also uh, be checked. Um, all of the codes that we have it here also freely, you can also access uh, in this, uh, just follow this link. And uh, so in summary, this is my final slide. I hope that I could uh, demonstrate that uh, machine learning based interatomic potentials can really accurately reproduce the FT or more accurate quantum uh, mechanic uh, uh, database. For example, then can simulate, for example, complex structure models that I show uh, in my uh, talk is copper single oxide, or for example, atomic ordering as a result of uh, copper gold nano alloy. Actually, is quite different in vacuum and also in aqueous solutions. And the last one that, or the second last, I also show how complex of silicon uh, uh, in the uh, silicon anode. And also we propose uh, the last uh, project, two-step approach by combining machine learning to integrate a small experimental data uh, 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 with larger uh, first principles uh, calculations. And finally, I would like to thank my collaborators and facilities. For example, the team at Columbia uh, Xianwang, visiting, stu visiting students from China, uh, Dr. How you go the postdocs, and also uh, April Cooper, who also helped to contribute the develop um, in it, and also the collaborators uh, at Columbia, Professor Shen, and also uh, Dr. Urban, and also the collaborators at the BNL, um, Professor or Dr. Uh, Mark Tyberson, and also my current postdoc at Columbia is still ongoing some projects. Uh, Anika Stukers also work on. Um, develop machine learning for batteries. And yeah, I will still continue uh, 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 working on, 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 on the applied machine learning models for or to understand complex energy materials, including also the work that I really would love to uh, collaborate and work uh, uh, with the scientists here at Utrecht. And finally, I would like to thank everyone for coming to my talk and I'm happy to take questions. Sorry, it's a bit uh, long. Thank you very much.